So, funny story. We were taking on buckets of water. Tomorrow's in there now, I'm pulling out buckets and buckets. A little scared, we're getting the lifeboats ready. That's only a little bit of water, and uh, on the Pacific Ocean, expect some water. Hey guys, so we have completed our first seven days on the COVID coast to coast. Where are we going? Mm, now or? Panama to Australia. Oh right, I thought you meant like the change of destination. <laughs> Sorry. So, Mara, lead us away. What has the first seven days been like? If you haven't sailed before, we've got some great tips coming up. We've got some great what to do's, what not to do's. Um, kind of food you can expect and... What well, dramas may or may not happen. Yeah, may or, depending on what, what boat you're on. Yeah, we've had, a, we've had a pretty exciting seven days going from all the animals we've seen. We've, um, we've had schools of dolphins numbering up to about a thousand. We've seen turtles, we've seen sharks, we've seen... Well, Jake saw a pot of whales and didn't wake me. She was asleep. This is two days ago, he's still in trouble. <laughs> well, I figure it's a big ocean, there's going to be more whales, and we haven't seen any whales since. No, <laughs> so he's hoping the rest of the trip we get more whales. Yeah. And the jellyfish, how ridiculous are the jellyfish? So, millions of jellyfish. Yeah. Like, jellyfish, jellyfish. First time we're like, oh, look at all the jellyfish. And we're like, oh, there's more jellyfish. Kind of like flying fish too, actually. Yeah, it's a ridiculous amount of flying fish. For about three days, the school of flying fish has just been following us, and they're like, not like little kids, really, they just come around and jump, flip, everything like that. Yeah. What you can hear is the sounds in the boats um, creaking. Kind of feel like Captain Cook, really. But we get used to it after a while. On a small boat. So what have we done? We've got it onto a 46-foot, um, I think they call it a sloop boat, not too sure. We've got two sails. Um, and we've got one captain and us two. Zero experience. Um, average. Emma? 18 crew. I thought you said 18 crew. I'm like, we don't have 18 crew. <laughs> you couldn't fit 18 crew. No. But we have got average skill, phenomenal will. Don't you worry. Yeah, I think our skill's pretty up there now after seven days. Mm. We'll go down pat. So, um, take it away, Mara. Lead us through what happened day one. One of your favourite things that she's got a tattoo of? I've got turtles. <laughs> as soon as we left, like, it would have been about an hour out, we had a turtle come up. And he like come up with his shell and poke his head out and look straight at us. It was um it was pretty exciting. It was um a bit of a send you off from Panama, so that was cool. Yes, yeah, so we had Panama in the background and little turtle saying, G'day mate. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. But we had a pretty calm day, we didn't do too much, just relaxed, had some naps, you know, prepared for the night watches and then in the night as we were leaving uh, what is it, the Gulf of Panama, where all the boats Gulf de Panama. kind of cross to go into the canal. Um, we had this boat and they, he come pretty close to us. Like yeah, kept coming closer and closer. I'm like, I think he's coming closer. And I was like, nah, but he did. Yeah, by the time Trev admitted it, he was like, what seems like 10 metres away. <laughs> but, um, so we kicked on the engine and went to turn in another direction and... <laughs> Shit, shit went a bit wild there. The fan. Yeah, we um, we had to change because we we're turning right. Uh, we we're turning to starboard side. Um, we had to change the side of the sail. So Jake and I are on the sails, Trev's steering, and then some part of the sail got caught up. So he went forward, and then the autopilot dropped out, and the boat's going whoop whoop. Max Dowie's in the gravel pits. <laughs> yeah, we'll put up an image here of um, so you can see our route there. Yeah, it should be right, right here if you look now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so we got, we got it all sorted. It got it got recovered, but we did a couple loopy loops. We finally got it back on track, and 
Um, yeah. Loop de loops. Loop de loops, some donuts, some doughies. Yeah. Day two, it was a beautiful sunrise. You could still see a bit of Panama in the background. Um, and that was the day we saw most of our animals, I think. We saw sharks and yeah, everything going through then. The funny thing is, when Jake saw the sharks, he's like, yep, once I see a shark, 24 hours, and I'm, then I'll go in the water. Yeah. I'm like, I don't mind the sharks, but if I see the jellyfish, <laughs> no. I figure if you see a shark, just wait 24 hours. You should get, what, 100 nautical miles away. Yeah, so day two, pretty pretty calm day. A lot of people say that you do need to motor a lot of the distance between Panama and Galapagos, um, and which we did. <laughs> so yeah. once you're motoring, really not a lot to do until we hit day three where we lost power. Um, so we lost power. So everything was gone, the fridge was gone, the navigation was gone, uh, the inverter to charge the laptop for the navigation was gone. The only, the only navigation we had was off an iPad that we could charge because we can still charge our phones and our battery. I don't know, our phones and iPads, and I don't know how it works. Choose the sparky. We have minimal power in daytime when the solar power is, like when the sun's up and the solar power is running. Well, not enough to run things like in the daytime we can run the autopilot but in the night time at about six o'clock every day it cuts out so we steer from 6 p.m till about 8 30 a.m yeah. steering your foot looking at the stars it's a pretty hectic experience some of the nights one of those first few nights i think it was on day five i was on night shift and just plotting along lovely beautiful night and glassy waters so the first seven days it was not Rob sees it was glass. Because like, when we saw it, just flat. Yeah, it was Here ridiculous. Is yeah. <laughs> this is what I imagined it would be like. Not those glassy waters. Yeah. But um. But that was incredible to see anyway. Like, you've never seen something so smooth, and a camera does not do it justice. When you're out there, it looks epic. Yeah. It's 360 degrees, and it looks like you could go out and walk on it. Yeah. <laughs> and at night time, the dolphins would come up, and you can't see them because it's pitch black. But once they dive in. Like you can see like the moon or the stars reflect on their bodies as they come out but as they go back in you can see the phosphorus trail oh, oh. so pretty that's what christopher Columbus said it was fire on the wall when he was um sailing through but it's yeah essentially like a neon light that shines from the marine life anyway but then what happened so day five was also the day we found out we had a water leakage was that day five or was it day four probably day four day four yeah. Because day three we lost the battery and then day four we put the water. <laughs> so we're sitting there with no navigation, no batteries, no, you can't say you can't use lights. We didn't have lights for, we didn't have lights when you're sailing at night, we couldn't <laughs> put them on. Um, so you couldn't put your port lights, steamer lights, anything like that. No, but it was just pitch black. <laughs> and then we found out we got water. <laughs> yeah, so there's water in the build. Click, uh, quick, ah, uh, put in a quick clip here so you can see all the water. But, um, we emptied how many buckets in it total? 356. 356, by the end of it. yes. Jake kept count. Yeah. <clears throat> there was 58 on the first day, and we, we didn't know what the problem was. So then we went through and we cut off all the sinks and cut off all the toilets. And the next day, there was still more water. So maybe it's just running out. So then we, but we emptied some in the sink. So Trevor had a theory that maybe it was leaking from the sink. And then that wasn't it and then we checked every single thing and yeah, so this, this is now day five so we emptied it like three times on day four Bill and times then, don't work because the <laughs> no power, the power. <laughs> and then we, we emptied are the it bilge pumps. Yeah. <laughs> so then we went through just, just sloshed all night and then day five is when Trev tells us about the exhaust oh so he goes oh it could be it could be the exhaust because it could have a leak in it because it did happen when I crossed the Atlantic. Wait, it's happened before. <laughs> so we wanted to get up underneath in there and duct tape with a bit of plastic to try and hold it until we could lease. That's when we decided to go to Galapagos. So we weren't even going to go there. And um, we had to enter under emergency, like what? emergency maritime law where you're allowed to go for 76 hours just to fix up your stuff. And it mm. makes sense, like you can't just leave people out there. Yeah. Well, we had nothing. We had no battery, we had no navigation, we had no bloody anything. And then we got water filling up the boat. Mm. <laughs> like, oh. 
kind of wanted to get that fixed. Yeah. <laughs> so we stopped in the Galapagos for a couple days to get everything sorted out. So we went in the Galapagos, it was about 3 o'clock at night time, going in between St. Cristobal and Santa Fe Island. Um, to get around to Santa Cruz where we ended up staying and fixing up everything. But um, it was about 3 o'clock in the night and I heard these seals jumping beside... Well, I didn't know there were seals at the time. But I heard these, these splashes next to the water. It was midnight. I, I could, I've got pretty good eyesight so I could see something splashing out there. But um, I realised when we got into the thing it was seals trying to jump on the back of the boat to see if we had any fish or something. I don't know. But they just kept going, plotting around. And then when we got into the marina, they were bloody seals everywhere, weren't they? Yeah, you get the little taxi boat from, like, they pick you up at your boat and they take you in. And, like, you walk up the ramp and there's just seals lounging on um, on the bench chairs there and sitting on the backs of people's boats and things like that. It's pretty cool. Mm. Yeah, quite enjoyed it. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, that's a pretty brief little thing of our first seven days. We have got a blog on at www. Is it www? Mm -hmm. www.lockdowntravelers.com That's the one. Um, yeah, so there'll be a blog up there for more detail and I suppose a further insight into your first seven days. Yeah. But if you are thinking of sailing, do it. It's the best experience you'll have. Um, it's definitely some mental, it's a mental fight by the end of it. Um, you've just got to keep on top of it, keep yourself entertained. Mm. We're on day 24 now of day 35 or 34. So we're looking at the final count, but then we've got... Yeah, but that's not the final, that's just getting us to Marquesas, the Marquesas. Which is in French Polynesia, and then we've got seven days to Papieti, which is the Tahiti, the, the capital of Tahiti. Um, and then we go three days to Bora Bora, or we go back to Marquesas to sail through other islands, depends. Trevor's working out if he wants a fridge there, his beer. Yeah, well we... <laughs> Since fixing everything at Galapagos, everything is broken again. So now we've got to get everything fixed again. Yeah. But we'll go more into that a bit later. You can see that in another one. We're pretty tired at the moment. Yeah, it's nap time for us now. We just had a big lunch. Just living that lockdown travel life. You know it. We're going to bring out some food vlogs, what to bring. Ask tomorrow what to bring. I bet you she'll tell you one thing right now. Snacks? I would have said a wet weather jacket. Oh, wet weather jacket. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, we've had some rainy days and um, my my jacket is just not... Where is my jacket? Oh, I wouldn't even call it a jacket. Where is her rag? She wraps around herself to like get soaked in the bone. It's a nice jacket. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like it? It's not waterproof. It's not waterproof. It's no Kathy. No. Oh. I'll, I'll show you later, but I'll go... Did you just name your jacket Kathy? Jacket is named Kathy. Man, do Kathy. <laughs> she dries a bone. <laughs> Alright, keep living that lockdown travel life. Bye. Bye. China plate in the lockdown travelers coming to a Pacific island near you. We'll get there a couple of days away from the And on to French Polynesia. I will go down with a thin ship. I will come right. There will be no one flag above our heads Cause tomorrow get the buckets And throw them out the door yeah, It's turned a little bit of a serious situation <laughs> <laughs>